start this one. What do you think you'll take away from the last couple of months and this experience culminating in playing in this big match? Yeah, I think um, I've always known that I'm a fighter, um, but to to be through um, the journey I've been through over the past few months and to land myself on Armstrong playing against one of the best in the game and and going the distance, um, I think that really just reinforces it for me. And uh, yeah, I'm going to take a lot of inspiration from this and uh, try to carry it forward into um, what's left in my year and my tennis career. What was the toughest challenge for you psychologically? Today or? In general. Um, I mean, I think just kind of trying to figure out, um, you know, where tennis stood in all of it um, from the beginning, trying to figure out whether, uh, you know, I should be concerned about getting back on court or just getting my health back under me. I think there was a balance to be struck there. Um, and it took me a little while to figure out, okay, I need to take care of myself as a person first and then as an athlete. Um, so I think that was one of the biggest challenges for me. What was your initial reaction when you were diagnosed? Um, I had a, I mean, I was definitely like shocked. Um, it was on a phone call. Um, I had been told not to really worry about the biopsy. They thought it was going to be benign. Um, so I wasn't anticipating, I, I was nervous about it, but I wasn't anticipating that it would be um, cancerous. So when I got the call, um, you know, the doctor on the phone was kind of like, do you want to come in and talk about this? And I was like, nope, tell me now. <laughs> um, and, you know, he said it was positive for cancer. Um, and I fortunately was already sitting down. Otherwise, I think I would have needed to sit down. Um, and then I was just uh, really disappointed that I was alone. I called my fiance right away and kind of fell apart um, when I called him. Um, and he's always such a comforting influence for me, but he was definitely uh, pretty scared too at that moment. Yeah, uh, um, I know people always talk about, you know, I think you guys, you using the word, putting things in perspective, mm -hmm. of course. Uh, where is the perspective now when you just had a tough match? And is it easy to say, okay, it's just a match, or does it still, the, the committee just comes back to you and you say, no, 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 I really wanted to win that? And, it's a combination. Um, I'm definitely bummed out. Um, but at the same time, I, I think I do have a new perspective that it, it's, you know, it's not life and death out there. It's, uh, you know, a privilege to be on a court like that against a player like that. Um, and I was just trying to really soak up the moment. I was definitely looking up a lot more than I kind of normally would. Um, I always get made fun of on tour because I like kind of keep my head down and I look up and everybody says it's like the Gibbsy stare down. Um, so I was trying to kind of hold my posture a little bit better, take in the atmosphere and uh, just take a, a slightly different approach to the way that I'm thinking about my tennis. Hey, Nicole, you've talked, you've been very open and honest about, about struggles with, with mental health and mental illness. How, does, how has this experience changed, and why do you think it is prevalent for you and, and for tennis? Yeah, so a couple of things about that. Um, first of all, I was really, like, I've been doing really well over the past year and a half or so, um, just with my mental health. Um, I've talked about before being on medication for depression, and I haven't been for the last year and a half, um, and I've found myself generally in a pretty good place. Um, now, when I got the diagnosis, I was really concerned about where that would kind of land for me if, uh, you know, I would have a lot of anxiety or, or what exactly I would go through. And I would say that, um, you know, depression and anxiety as a whole have been like weirdly absent for me since this experience. Obviously, you have the normal kind of, you know, reaction to whatever you're immediately going through. but. I don't feel that I had any sort of like outsized reaction to what I was going through. I thought um, I was kind of pleasantly surprised. I thought I might experience a lot more. Um, and I think um, kind of what I've taken from that is that your, uh, your mind kind of like shrinks and expands with whatever is like in front of you. Um, and I think uh, when there's a really like big challenge or a scary moment in front of you, you kind of 
tend to rise to the occasion or, um, you know, just adapt to what's in front of you. I was just going to ask, given everything, uh, the time off the court and all, where are you physically and in what areas do you think you can still get stronger stamina or whatever? Yeah, so I've definitely lost some weight. Um, I feel a little bit um, maybe still under fighting weight for, for, my, for my tennis. Um, so that's definitely something I'm going to look into. Um, I think I held up pretty well physically, but um, could have held up a little bit better in the third set. Uh, I think I lost some depth on my shots. So uh, recently, people start talking about age eligibility again because, like a Coco Golf, she she uh -huh. starts playing tennis uh, at that age. But uh, at the same time, we are talking about that kind of like a depression or you know something which such as like uh, you have gone through and uh, like, a, like five years ago, like Rebecca Marino, she retired because of the depression and she mm -hmm. went to university and came back and. She, also, she starts talking about the importance of age eligibility. So what is your opinion on that subject? I think it's really tricky because someone like Coco Goff is clearly poised to have a really you know, epic season, I think, um, and is clearly a top 100 caliber player. Um, so it's tough to kind of limit her from that sense. But at the same time, I think um, it is kind of a mindful rule um, to prevent uh, these younger girls from burnout. I mean, someone like Coco is already under such high demand and to put a full schedule and all of the media requirements um, that she's going through on, on a 15-year-old girl, I think is a lot to ask. I do think she's mature enough for the challenge, but I don't think every 15-year-old is. Um, so I don't know. I think there's a, there's a conversation to be had about, about whether it's still prevalent um, or, or still uh, the right thing. Last question. What effect do you hope it will have on fans, your performance, and also all that you've shared? Um, yeah, I guess I just hope that um, you know there's someone who's going through a tough time that can take inspiration from from my journey and and feel like maybe uh, that they can turn it into something really positive, um, the way that you know I hope I have. Thank you. Thank you.